Hello there, and how are you? Okay, so this is going to be week two, read aloud. I'm just going to get started by sharing my screen. And as I read the text, I will analyze the text as well. I will not be doing the whole story. It is quite long, but I'm happy for you to ask any questions uh, in the messaging platform if you'd like me to continue or need me to continue. But let's make this a start so that you can do the same thing with your story. So this should be somewhat familiar already. Again, it is The Puzzle Maker by Nathan Asser. And this week's focus also, again, is on figurative language and also making inferences. So let's keep that in mind with the Read Lab. Let's get started. It was spring and everything was growing up. Karen didn't let a thing pass unseen on the long walk to school. Not the neighborhood cats grown fat from winter mice, nor the splashy colors of flowers in the once drab and icy pots and planters, nor the trees turned shady again. She skipped over dandelions wiggling free from cracks in the pavement and pricked her ears at crickets chirping in the hedges and buzzing bumblebees busy relearning how to make honey. So right there, that very first paragraph is quite often a popular way to start a short story with the setting. So it's telling us it's spring. And the first thing I'd like to point out is where it says everything was growing up. Kind of like it's a person, right? But we know spring is not a person. You've probably heard and used personification before in your classroom. So here the author is referring to the season. Everything was growing up. So we know they're not people, but there are things growing as we often find things growing in springtime. So I want you to describe the setting in words in your organizer to, again, help you get a better sense of the story, picturing it in your mind, leading to deeper comprehension. So there is a description here. First, we know that the character, Karen, is going to be a main character, and we want to learn a little bit more about her. So we see that there is a description about the cats growing fat from the mice that they've eaten in the wintertime, the flowers that are now blooming in spring after perhaps a cold and icy winter. She mentions, while well, she is skipping over dandelions, and it says they are wiggling free from cracks in the pavement. So are they literally wiggling? But the character, I'm sorry, the author is describing the growth of the dandelions. So it makes for interesting reading. It makes us, the reader, a little bit more interested. And it is a great writing technique. But we're pointing out that these things are not completely literal. The, da the dandelion isn't actually dancing or wiggling, but it is growing. And it's, it's growing up through cracks in the ground or uh, as you may see around your neighborhood or your yard when things kind of make their way through stones and pavers. Let's keep going. It also mentions how crickets are chirping in the hedges and buzzing bumblebees busy relearning how to make honey. But it's not like these bumblebees are sitting in a classroom relearning like we're relearning. It is, however, very interesting techniques that the author uses to keep our interest, but we also want to be sure that we understand things that are not quite literal. So let's keep going. We've only gotten through the first paragraph, but this is what I want you to be doing when you're reading the text. There's a lot to be thinking about as you're reading the text. You're not just reading word for word. You are thinking in various ways about the text. Feel free to stop it, uh, pause this if you need to, write in the graphic organizer, or for now, just listen along. Now we're learning a little more about the character. It wasn't her first time walking the maze of narrow streets, 
but it was her first time as a third grader. So we're noting something about the character, Karen, who is a third grader. In Karen's town, the new school year began in April, that month where the ground is always wet from morning showers and when everyone carries them with an umbrella, knowing if it's not raining now, it will be on the way home. So again, we're learning a little bit more about the setting as well, where, when, what it looks like, a little bit more about Karen, one of our main characters. Let's keep moving. Karen had forgotten her umbrella this morning. It was easy to overlook things in the rush and excitement of the first day. Did she remember her name tag? There it was pinned on her shirt. And her thermos of tea? Strapped to the outside of her backpack with her good luck charms. There were also her school shoes and all her new books. She had enough to carry without the umbrella. So again, these things are not in the text. The author is not describing fully things about Karen, but we can make inferences about her. The fact that she has her name tag pinned on her shirt. She has her thermos with her tea. She has her good luck charms and her school shoes on and all her new books. We may think she's organized. We may think she probably really likes school. It sounds like she likes it. She likes all the things that go along and she's very well prepared with these things, the shoes, the books, the backpack, the thermos. So we want to make inferences about the character as we are reading the text. The author is not always going to write every detail about this character. He or she is leaving it up to us to learn about the character. At the corner, she sniffed fresh cut, fresh cut grass and ashy incense in the air. From between the houses, she could see the cemetery on the hill, bright under the sun, yet darkened by gray slabs of stone. She sped up past the small open gate. There's nothing wrong with taking the long way around, she thought. So again, we're learning more and picturing more in our minds about the setting, which we always want to do. A half an hour later, she spotted all her teachers from last year and a few new ones standing in a line at the school entrance. Good morning, they greeted the children. Fine weather so far, they said to the neighbors passing by. Karen waved at her friends as they changed into their school shoes in the front hallway. They waved back and called out, hurry up, Karen. But before going through the gate, Karen's keen eyes spied a shimmer of light on the side of the road. It was a coin with the number one etched in the middle. She stopped and looked around at the other kids. Either they had all missed it or passed it up. I guess not many people take the time to pick up such a small amount of money, she thought, but I do. She gave the coin a quick polish on her denim skirt and dropped it in her pocket. She would add it to her savings. So again, we want to make some inferences, some additional inferences about Karen. We are visualizing her waving to her friends. She's probably friendly. She again seems to enjoy being at the first day of school. She takes the time to pick up that coin and saves it. So we can think about and make some inferences and learn a little bit about Karen. So I'd like you to also jot down what you're thinking about Karen. What inferences are you making? I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I'm going to stop the recording here. I'm going to continue with a separate recording. But for now, I'd like you to jot down some of these things in your organizer and just think about how you make inferences in your day-to-day -day reading, whether it's about the character or something else in the story. So maybe you can also share something with me. So again, I'm going to stop the recording here. I will be continuing the reading of The Puzzle Maker in a separate recording and continue to analyze the text.